Hey everybody, welcome to Bestie Book Reviews. I'm here with my bestie Mandy. And I'm here with my bestie Jessica. Okay, so let's talk second chance romances. That is what this video is gonna be about today and we are excited to bring these to you. But first, fill them in, Mandy. Make sure you subscribe, please. <laughs> To us on YouTube, follow us on Instagram, and you can get an extra entry into our Road to 1K drawing. Our next drawing will be at 750 YouTube subscribers for Nine Minutes by Beth Flynn. It is signed, and we do have some swag to go with it. This is an amazing read. You definitely want this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was one of our top reads for, that was our top read for July, but that'll be one of our top reads for the year, I'm sure. Oh, definitely. Definitely. Yeah, we love that book. That was so good. So, yes. so read it, but, you know, make sure to subscribe so you could possibly win it as well. Yes. Okay, so let's talk second chance romances. I love second chance romance. It's like a trope that I look for all the time. When I was making my list for this, I was like, well, that's a lot of books. Like there was just the, the list. The list was really long. So um, I'm excited for this one. What about you, Mandy? <laughs> I guess I'm not a huge fan of second chance romance. I don't like big time jumps in relationships. So I think that's part of why. But I kind of feel like if this is true love, why are we not making it work the first time? <laughs> Typically there's reasons, but okay. okay. I know. I just, okay. you had a bunch and I like had like eight. That's funny. That I could find. But I also realized like I read two this week that were second chance romances and didn't even really put that together. So yeah. I probably have read a lot more. I probably actually like the trope more than I think I do. Just when I think about that, it's not something I'm seeking out. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. I think that, I mean, when I was looking on Goodreads, there were books that were not even on list because people put them on the list. It's not like the authors do. It's more mm -hmm. like readers so the lists aren't very accurate all the time yeah. um, there was a lot that were missed in this list that i was looking at going you've, you've missed half the good ones people so or people would categorize them as second chance and they weren't so mm -hmm. yeah all right so we each have five uh second chance romances to talk about so mandy do you want to start us off with your first book um sure so my first second chance romance is Love and Other Words by Christina Lauren. I loved this book. It was a five-star read for me. This is about Macy and Elliot. And this goes back between past and present. So we're doing kind of flashbacks. They were childhood besties, like just absolutely adored each other, spent a ton of time together. And somehow it fell apart, but we don't really know why. We kind of get that through the flashbacks. So in present time, they have just ran into each other. Macy is engaged, but she is engaged to Sean, and both of them are just going through the motions. There's really no spark or no chemistry. It's more like they just kind of fell into this relationship and are getting married, but they don't even have a wedding date set. This was a heartbreaking story and I cried multiple times during it. I loved the way the author wove this tale together of what went wrong and how they could possibly try and repair this and get back on track again. I cannot really actually say much else about it without giving huge parts of the book away, but I absolutely loved it. It was very good. It is actually a favorite read of mine for this year. Cool. Okay. So my first reg, I've actually talked about a few times on this channel, but it's just really not that popular, although it should be. It More people should be reading it. And that is Knotted by Pam Godwin. So this is a cowboy romance. This is the first in a set of three. Um, it's our Trails of Sin trilogy. And all three are amazing. But the first one here uh, is our uh, second chance romance. So this one, you guys have to forgive me. I have a cold. So, and it's a mama cold, not a man cold. So I have to like actually, you know, do stuff through it. Anyhow, I don't get to be a baby. So this is about um, Connor and Jack. And so Connor is female, but they've been 
together for years. Uh, when the book starts out, she's 16. Um, they're both 16 and they've decided to finally have sex for the first time. Um, Connor has some fantasies that are a little, you know, different than what most, I would say most 16 year old, year old girls probably has is she wants to be tied up for the first time. And so Jack takes her out into the field on the farm and he has this whole setup. He's got the rope there. You know, this this is going to be their first time, which is just very interesting for a first time, but that's okay. Um, these are dark, by the way, guys, so definitely check triggers. But on that first night, he gets her all tied up, and they're, they're getting into their groove when they're actually attacked by outsiders. And they end up keeping her tied up, tie him up, and they end up raping her, and he is forced to watch the whole scene. And then um, something because of the consequences of that they end up breaking up there's a lot of things that happen because of that they end up breaking up she leaves town she can't handle it and then this book takes place when she comes back to town a handful of years later because of the trauma she's never worked through it and he has his own little kinks now because of the trauma of that whole situation and so this is their story and how they figure it out and make that work together it was so good it was a five-star read for me it was just Pam Godwin is like one of my favorite authors. She writes dark, but she does it good. You've been telling me to read that. I need to. Yeah, you do. Yeah. Okay. Oh. So tell me. I know you need to read all the Pam Godwin, Mandy. Read all the Pam Godwin. Okay. Okay. All right. Okay. So tell me about your next book. Well, I'm trying to. <laughs> okay. All right. My next book is Wrong for You by Harlow Ray. If you've watched the channel before, you've probably gotten to check this out. Woo -hoo. <laughs> yeah, that's yummy. So I could just let us sit here and we can stare or I can tell you what the book is about or we could do both. I'll try and hold it up for you. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, this is about Jake and Harper and Jake and Harper had started dating and we are led to believe this happens with the prologue. We are led to believe that things were pretty good between the two of them. And Jake finds out that he got Morgan pregnant. And Morgan was somebody he had slept with right before he got together with Harper. So he wants to do the right thing. He breaks up with Harper and gets together with Morgan. We fast forward several years later and Harper and Jake run into each other again. Jake is now a single dad raising his daughter, Sydney. So I guess that's probably been about six years because Sydney, I think, is about five. And somehow they've gone all this time without seeing each other. And now they can't stop seeing each other. Uh, Harper is a ballet instructor and Jake's daughter, Sydney, takes ballet lessons from her. And they just kind of really intensely get thrown back into each other's worlds and feelings are still there, but both of them are still really, really cautious. So this is their story. That book is just worth looking at for hours on end. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Pretty yummy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Just kind of wipe the drool off that one. Okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so the next book that I have is one that I talked about last week in our Bestie Book review Reviews. Good gravy. Um, it is Pretty Ugly Promises by C.W. Farnsworth. So this one is a mafia second chance romance. So you have our heroine, Lila, and she meets Nick at college. And she's just, she, you know, she'd rather be sitting at home reading a book than being out at a party. But her friend convinces her to go to this party. So she does. And when she's there, she meets Nick and he's taken by her immediately because she's different and she, uh, you know, falls head over heels for him. And it's him and his best friend at this party. So she gets to know him. They um, end up together. They, you know, they, they have a, a relationship with each other for a while. And then all of a sudden, one day, Nick is just gone from college with his best friend and she can't find him. She looks high and low. She cannot find him. And then we fast forward and I think it was nine years later. She is living as a single mom, which is why she was trying to find him. She has an eight-year-old and she's trying to make ends meet. She's dating this other guy. She's struggling obviously, but she ends up getting cut, like making dinner and has to go to the emergency room. And when she gets there, the doctor that comes in to treat her is Nick's best friend. And she's like, just tell me he's alive. Like, I don't even know what happened. Just tell me he's alive. And he's like, yeah, he's alive. 
he's back in Russia. She doesn't know this. He's back in Russia. His family is the head of the Brava. And there was an attack and his father and brothers were killed, which put him in charge. And so he had to take off and go to Russia to lead the Brava, which is why he left. He never told her the story of who he was. But now that he she's found out and and they know that she has his child, she's in danger. So he has to kidnap her and take her to Russia with him. It was great. Love this book. It was great. It, it's a great mafia read as well as second chance romance. I love C.W. Farnsworth. Mm -hmm. She's a good author. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Okay. My next second chance romance is a novella. For those of you who are looking for a shorter second chance romance, this might be for you. This is called Cupid's Peak by Lee Jacko. Jacou? I don't know. I took <laughs> French. I should know. Uh, so this is about Mia. She is a very quiet introvert. And we have Eli, who is a famous hockey star. They knew each other in high school. And there was a major high school crush going on with the two of them. But they didn't realize it. And Mia's sister now sets her up on a blind date on Valentine's Day, nonetheless. And she goes on the blind date and it is Eli. And their date turns hot very quickly. I really enjoyed it. It's definitely a novella, but it's it's a really fun second chance romance with some hot steamy scenes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So you have hot and steamy. I have an itch. Um, I have emotional. Ooh, okay. I think you've read this one. So this is Beautiful Graves um, by LJ Shen. Have you read this one? I don't think so. I thought I told you to read this one, Mandy. A while ago. Okay. Okay. It better be on your list. Anyhow, okay. this one's great. So this one is extremely emotional. So this is about Ever Everlyn or Everlyn. I can't remember. I think it's Everlyn. Anyhow, she is has just graduated. So she goes to Europe um, on a trip. And I can't remember if it was college or high school. It's been almost a year since I read this. But she's she goes on this trip. And when she gets there, she keeps running into this guy. Um, and he is, I believe he's Joe. Because this has got two guys in it, Joe and Dom. It's kind of a love triangle-y, but it works. It, 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 you just have to stick with it. I hate love triangles, and this worked. But she meets the one guy. And he becomes her muse. She, um, I believe she was a writer. But she and him... It, keep running into each other and then they just they hit it off and they have the summer together and they're in love and then she has to go home and so she ends up going home and they write to each other for a while but then you know you're writing a letter to somebody in a, you know thousands and thousands and thousands of miles away whatever she's in the u.s and he's in europe it's a long way and you're young so they're they're you know she's writing to this guy across the pond and Things fall apart. Things happen. Things fall apart. Then our our uh, story is fast forwarded a few years and she is married and she is, you know, has a great life and she loves her husband. But then all of a sudden, this guy comes back into the picture. And the way he comes back into the picture blew my mind. I did not see the writing on the wall. I did see not did not see this coming. And then as like she's trying to deal with the fact that this guy is back in her life in a way that she had never thought could happen. Like didn't even this wasn't even on her radar. Tragedy strikes. And so this book was very emotional, but it was so good and it was just I mean, like you're on the edge of your seat the whole time trying to figure out how this is going to work out. The writing just sucked me in and would not let go reading this book. It was just so good. So good. So yeah, you guys got to read this one too. Okay. My next second chance romance was a very recent read of mine called Second Down Darling by Lex Martin. And this is a second chance romance, even though they were not actually together at the beginning, it's still like even the author has it listed as a second chance romance. So it's slightly different maybe than some of the other second chance romances. So this is about Jake and Charlotte and they become best friends their freshman year of high school and they stay best friends all through high school. And when they are seniors, Jake has a one night stand with Charlotte's sister and gets her pregnant. And 
it's kind of devastating for Charlotte because she has been in love with Jake this whole time. And they all go off to college to the same college. Uh, Charlotte's sister, Dakota, is very selfish. She's very into herself and her social media presence. And she could really, she really doesn't seem to care about Jake or their baby. And Charlotte is still there, like being uh, a great support and, and kind of taking care of Jake as if they were in a relationship. But she just, she really, she truly respects the friendship boundary, but she has all of these feelings for him and she just can't take it anymore. And so she's like, I'm done. I have to just leave. I have to cut my ties and, and get out of here. So she, uh, without telling them transfers to another university and goes to school there and just completely cuts her family and him out of her life. And there's a lot more to it that you learn in the story. And then we kind of pick up a couple years later when Jake and Dakota have broken up and Jake moves him and his son to the same university that she's going to, where he's going to be starring as one of the uh, receivers or tight ends. I can't remember on the football team and they run into each other. And this is how that goes. I really loved it. This is like the second chance where maybe they can get it right this time. Mm -hmm. But Oh, it was really good. Five star read for me. Yeah. Good. Um, the next book that I chose is by Devony Perry. And when I was making this list, I noticed like Devony Perry does a lot of second chance romance and she does it good. Like she does it well. So I think you could choose many, many, many different Devony Perry books um, and get yourself a second chance romance. I have several on my shelf I need to read. Yeah, you do. But <laughs> this one that I chose was one of my favorite from the year. So this one is called Letters to Molly and it's the second in a series. And I read this one first and then went back and read the first one. The first one's called The Birthday List. Both are second chance romances. The first one, The Birthday List, is about um, second chance of finding love with someone. It's not the same person. But this one is about a husband and a wife who break up and then, you know, figure things out. So this is about Molly, you know, letters to Molly, and Finn. They meet when they're young and fresh out of school and they get married really quick. They're, they're just kind of attracted to each other instantly. Um, Finn and her Molly start a, uh, um, a landscaping business that they work together, but then kids come along and, you know, they kind of drift apart because he's focused on building this business and she's, she's staying at home with the kids and she's focused on the kids. And then tragedy strikes within their extended family. And because of that tragedy, it it just kind of took an almost already brittle situation, you know, very brittle relationship and just kind of broke it. And so when the book starts out, they've been divorced for a handful of years and they're co-parenting. And um, all of a sudden these letters start showing up. Now, these are letters that are showing up in Molly's mailbox. And they're from Finn. And they're from Finn when he first started dating her. He wrote letters to her that he had never given her. And Finn, she doesn't know who's sending the letters. Finn says, you know, he's, he doesn't know what's going on. Um, but these letters are showing up. And so as she's reading these letters, she's reliving their relationship and why they fell in love in the first place. But she's also reliving some of the trauma that they both went through. And so it's a definite emotional roller coaster for her and for us as a reader. But it was so good to, to watch this progression of this marriage where it fell apart, but yet then, you know, how they, they worked themselves back together. It was just so good. It was really good. I did something that really kind of surprises myself a little bit with the book that I picked, but I, I wanted to pick it. So I picked Crave Me by M. Robinson and I read this book back in like March or April and I was pretty harsh on the book <laughs> because <laughs> my notes, even from then, it directly says, this could have been a five star book, but it had a lot of typos in it. And there was some grammar and it would sometimes say like the wrong person for the point of view. So that really, for me, took away from the book. I read it on Kindle. I know that you can buy the book. And so my hope is if you actually purchase the book from M. Robinson, that you get a book that isn't full of those errors. So you can truly enjoy the story because the story itself was fantastic. So if you're, you go and read it on Kindle, 
when the version I read had a lot of mistakes in it. So hopefully it's been cleaned up since then, but if not, just know that going in. So this is about Briggs and Austin and Austin becomes addicted to drugs and he falls in love with the girl Briggs, who is his drug dealer. So this is their story and how this kind of works out and they get together and then he kind of hits rock bottom. She is just a drug dealer for her uncle. She does not actually do drugs. And so their relationship really kind of hits rock bottom, basically, when he hits rock bottom with how uh, addicted he is. And so this is kind of their struggles through that. And then they also end up breaking up because of it. And then they meet up later and try and work some things out. And so it, it focuses really wholly on his addiction, but also on that second chance aspect, but you get a lot more in typical second chance romances. You get this little tiny backstory about why they're not together. And then the rest of the story is all about the second chance where this is like, a huge chunk of the book is about them getting together, why they break up, what happens kind of in between, and how they get back together. So the book, the storyline, the plot, all of it is fantastic. It was just frustrating with those errors. So I wasn't going to pick it, but I'm like, no, this is such a good book. And that, and that, I think, is why it was so frustrating that those errors were in there. So I really hope that has been fixed so that it is an enjoyable read for everyone. Because it truly, I rated it, I think, three and a half stars because it should have been a five-star book. But those, it was just too much it took away from it. Yeah, that's always hard because it draws you out of the story. Yes. Okay, so then for our last recommendation... I have Dane's A Storm by Mia Sheridan. So this is about Dane, obviously, and Audra. When they were young, they were married fresh out of high school. And then they, you know, had not, as they thought their relationship was solid, but then they went through a tragedy that um, is hard for the majority of couples to make it through, even couples that have been married for years and years and years. And so they ended up getting a divorce. And now I think it's, um, many years later, they're both, you know, living their lives. Um, Audra is a wedding planner and then Dane is on the West coast. I think in like California area doing whatever he's doing over there. Uh, when they broke up, Audra was supposed to keep part of like the building where her planning, her wedding planning is happening. Um, her business is at like he, that was gifted to her from him. And so she was supposed to be able to keep that. Well, things happen, things come out that apparently she, he's going to sell the building. Um, there's some nefarious things happening. And so she ends up having to fly to where he is in California to get, to get this settled. And then on the way home, he decides to fly her back. Their plane crashes in the middle of a storm in the mountains and they have to survive that together and they have to work through the trauma that they went through together as a couple. Um, I will say you probably should be checking trigger warnings in this one. Not that it's an extremely dark book. So if you have suffered pregnancy loss or the loss of a, an infant or a child, I would definitely caution going into this one. But, um, and normally we don't like to give away what the triggers are because sometimes that gives away the book, but this is one that I'm pretty serious about. So, um, Definitely check those before you go in there. But yeah, loved this book. It was great. But emotional. Okay. Yeah. All right, guys. So that is all the second chance romances that we have. Make sure to leave us a comment and let us know what are some of your favorite second chance romances. And also check back on Mondays, Thursdays, and Saturdays for new videos from us. Thanks again for watching and we will see you in the next video.